Why did you even click on this video? Like, seriously. You ain't seen the cards in real life, dog. You ain't even got clap bomb yet. Why are you here? Like, it don't make no sense. Hey, no, chill, chill, chill. I, I need you to stay here. I, I need the views. So, King Cali has taken Exosisters, and Cali the Don has taken Tear Laments. I wonder who would have taken Sprite. Well, if he wasn't such a terrible actor, then I would have known. Unlike the others, I'm well aware of intellectual Cali, and I will soon defeat him. Maybe giving you the guide on how to beat all three of these strategies will be beneficial to us both. Play branded, my friends, and win the meta. I genuinely don't give a flying f what anybody says, guys. We will continue the Caliverse lore because it's just simply amazing. I mean, it's better than the Konami lore. The only thing they give you are pictures. And the last time I used pictures for, uh, for something, I got stuck in the microwave. Yeah, that way. With that being said, there are two brand new strategies from Power of the Elements that players are thinking is tier zero. They think this is going to destroy the meta and take over the world. Seriously guys, you guys do this for every single set, stop. I'm going to let you know if it's meta. You click on the video until then, it's not meta. But anyways, let's start talking about these strategies and how you could be beating them as well as their viability in the format. We're gonna go ahead and begin with the Sprite strategy. This strategy is like the dumbest name strategy ever. It went from Splite to Sprite and Sprite ain't even spelled right. Boy, what I really would give to just be in their R&D department where they were naming this dumbass deck. But a basic synopsis of the sprite strategy is that it's built on being able to special summon level two monsters to the side of the field, any level two. This allows them to be able to mesh really well with the tri Brigade strategy, with the live twin strategy, but I think the most competitive will be the frog strategy because being able to special summon totally awesome to your side of the field and then negate an opponent's card and get its effect twice, I think that's pretty good. Now the problem with players overhyping this strategy is because they think that it'll be as powerful as it was in the OCG. The same OCG that has Maxi. The same OCG that allowed Sprite to search Maxi. Sprites are not going to be tier zero. But jumping on in, the cards that you should 100% stop against the Sprite strategy is Gigantic Sprite. Now Gigantic Sprite is going to be the card to be able to special summon their live twin, their uh, tri Brigade monster, or even their frog monster to your side of the field. It is literally the bridge between the sprites and whatever other engine they're playing. When you negate the Gigantic Sprite, you legitimately put them on, do you have the God Hand? And if they don't have the God Hand, we win for free. If they do, then we weren't winning no matter what. So throwing whatever you have at that monster, effect veilers, infinite impermanences, ash blossoms, throw it at the gigantic splite. There is one thing that I do wanna talk about is that if you negate it with a card like effect veiler, well, they still will be able to exceed summon into divine arsenal double A Zeus because gigantic sprites effect includes preventing them from being able to special summon and you negated it. Hey dog, I'm just letting you know, you negated the monster effect, not me. I just told you what was gonna happen. I'm gonna take all credit where credit is due and then I'm gonna deflect all blame because I've already warned you about it, so don't be stupid. But keep in mind what makes this sprite strategy so strong is its ability to be able to play through hand traps with Sprite Red. As you know, Sprite Red only negates monster effects, so infinite impermanence on the gigantic sprite completely goes through. Other than that, you're gonna need two forms of disruptions on the gigantic sprite. Now, ironically, what Sprite does extremely good is play through those minimal hand traps and still make a fairly powerful board. But fortunately for us, it actually loses really hard to Dark Ruler No More. It's actually ridiculous. Board breaking cards are so amazing against the Sprite strategy. Sprite players in the OCG would search Maxi because they know their board would get broken and Maxi is just unfair when you can search it. And that actually is a huge difference between Sprite in the TCG and the OCG, unless that forbidden list comes around and um, does that thing, we're good. I ain't gonna cap though, it would be so Konami for them to unban Maxi. That's when we'll start panicking. Another great point of interaction against the Sprite strategy is preventing them from getting that first summon. 
Normally they'll summon a monster like Deep Sea Diva or Nimble Angler, and that will allow them to summon another level two monster to their side of the field. This means that cards that just negate the monster effect don't necessarily do enough as they still have a level two, and cards that destroy the monster on the field don't do enough because they'll just summon another level two. Cypher and Gear Gamma not only prevents the monster effect from activating, it destroys it. And then there's Solemn Strike, a card that can actually play around totally awesome and also destroy some of their most powerful effects. One of my favorite cards is Predaplant Dracus Topelia against them right now, because not only does it negate the monster effect, it reduces its level to one. That is huge because it's no longer level two. Come on, think with me now. Now some really good cards to just outright blow Sprite out of the water. Dimensional Barrier declaring Exceed is really good good as not only is gigantic sprite and totally awesome Exceed monsters, normally when they try to get into the better parts of their engine, it's the Exceed cards. There's a card named Mischief of the Gnomes, reducing all monsters in their hand by one, whether they hit the field or not. This card is actually low-key bonkers against the deck because not only is it practically a turn skip for them, you can use its effect in the graveyard on the following turn. So you get two turns to be able to completely clap a sprite player. There's also Lava Golem and Wing Dragon around Sphere Mode. If their board gets too big and you don't feel like wasting a Dark Ruler no more, then there's some other really, really cheeky cards if you're trying to go there and Deck Devastation Virus, which annihilates their entire potentially hand. And if you didn't play Dark Monsters, don't worry, just make Code Breaker Swordsman. Lastly, a really interesting card that almost hits all of them across the board is Chaos Hunter, as they do need to banish for Ron and Tonin and a couple of other card effects in order to keep going. Also, Chaos Hunter is bigger than all of the monsters. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. And now that we got our bases covered with the sprite strategy, let's move on to Tier Elements. Tier Elements is actually a strategy built on being able to fusion summon, like, we really needed another one of those. No, 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 no. Between Destiny Hero Destroyer, Phoenix Enforcer, Invoked, Branded, and Predaplant, nah, we, we definitely needed another fusion archetype. We don't need any XE archetypes to be competitive. But the tier limit strategy is built off of being able to fusion summon by using monsters in the graveyard. All of your dark tier limit monsters trigger when they are sent to the graveyard by a card effect to be able to shuffle themselves back inside of the deck as well as material to be able to fusion summon into anything. It doesn't have to be tier limits. I ain't gonna lie though, this is actually kind of cool. It makes up for playing cards like Polymerization. You get the fuse once with Polymerization and then they go to the graveyard and then you get the fuse with the materials in your graveyard and put it back into your deck. That was, that was, that was kind of cool. But where they goofy goober at is that the monster needs to return to the deck in order for them to fusion summon. So a really good answer to the tier limit strategy is just banish the tier limit monster that's activating the graveyard to fuse. Cards like DD Crow does a very, very efficient job at being able to stop that. I really would recommend against using cards like Skullmeister or Ghost Bell in Haunted Mansion. And the main reason is, is because if they have multiple cards activating at the same time, well, then they can make their tier limit monster effect as chain link one. And then their other monster effects or card effects as chain link two and higher, preventing you from being able to use those cards. But with DD Crow, no, we don't care. We just crow the card. But in case you didn't draw the DD Crow forehead, another way to be able to beat the deck is actually stopping the tier limit Kit Kalos. Most of the time, the deck runs completely through the Kit Kalos, and there are so many times I've seen a player use a card like Effect Veiler or Infinite Impermanence on the starter card like Reinhardt or Mare of the Shore. I wouldn't do that. Think of it like the Sword Soul strategy. Yes, that could potentially stop them from getting into their extra deck card, or you could just stop the extra deck card. It kind of reminds me when you ask Yu-Gi-Oh players if they can have any card they want from their deck to their hand, or they can activate Pot of Desires. I ain't gonna lie, I pick the Desires every single time too. I mean, think about it. Any card you want out of your deck is any card you want out of your deck. But the Desires is the Desires. It can even be the cards that you want out of your deck until you draw two desires. Throwing some of your best disruptive cards at tier limit, Kid Kalos is probably your best bet as this card normally searches the card that they really want from their deck to their hand. Now going against a typical tier limit board, cards like Dark Ruler Demore don't work as effective because the tier limit strategy is actually built to be able to fusion summon on your turn. I actually do favor cards like Forbidden Chalice and Forbidden Droplet, as these cards can be used not only against the monsters currently on the field, but if you know if your opponent can fuse on your turn, they can be used reactively against the cards that they're trying to fuse into. 
Cosmic Cyclone is also really underrated. Not only does it allow you to banish meta noise before they can flip your monster face down and fusion summon, it can also stop their filled spell card on activation of searching a tier element monster. Now there are some really dirty cards in Yu-Gi-Oh to be able to just outright clap tier elements. It's actually funny how in 2022 Abyss Dweller is, is the end of this deck. You summon Abyss Dweller. They lose. Cards like Soul Drain in Necro Valley are also ridiculously good against Tier Limit as this strategy is ultra reliant on its graveyard effects. And then there are cards like Non-Fusion Area and Shadow Imprisoning Mirror if you're genuinely trying to get spicy against the deck. I mean, those are, those are just really, really spicy cards. And lastly, a strategy that got a couple of powerful cards from Power of the Elements is Exosister. Now the Exosister strategy is built on being able to exceed summon using one card exceed monsters. All you have to do is make sure your opponent moves cards out of their graveyard. Literally, it says move. I can't wait till somebody touch the graveyard and be like, yo, you, you touched the graveyard. I'm gonna use my Exosister. You moved it, dog. You moved the graveyard. Checking your graveyard gonna trigger my Exosister monsters. In all seriousness, moving cards out of the graveyard, whether it's adding, returning, whatever it is, will trigger an Exosister effect. And it actually becomes a little more busted because Martha, unlike the other Exosister monsters, says when you move a card out of your opponent's graveyard or they move a card out of the graveyard, you can trigger its effect unlike the others. Exosister is built off of being able to get mad value off of Exosister Magnifica, but also getting value off of Exosister Milkis to be able to banish and search, as well as the Exosister cap steel which will allow you to be able to prevent special summoning and search again now it's fairly simple on how to stop this strategy if you have a card like effect veiler infinite impermanent those cards stop using it on their monsters on the field seriously like glue eaters you gotta start realizing that that doesn't work in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Using Effect Veiler and Infinite Impermanence on their Exosister Milkis prevents them from being able to add a spell or trap card from their deck to their hand. If you use it on Capitil, it allows you to stop them from adding a monster from their deck to their hand. Use those wisely as there are some situations where you want to stop them from adding that Exosister Vetus or their Returnia, or you want to prevent them from adding Martha Stewart from their deck to their hand. Now there is another huge problem with the Exosister strategy that you can address. Don't touch the graveyard. Just don't use the graveyard forehead. Don't start no stuff. Won't be no stuff, dog. You can't trigger their effects if you ain't doing nothing in the graveyard. Their most important card is going to be Exosister Vetus. This allows them to spell summon two sisters to their side of the field. Being able to stop that with an Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring or whatever is going to be good. And then their trap card stopping Returnia with ever you can is also really good because you do not want this deck exceed summoning on your turn. Ironically, most hand traps don't work extremely well against the Exosister strategy. Even if you are using Effect Failure and Infinite Impermanence on those particular cards, they could already possibly have it. But using cards like Forbidden Droplets and Forbidden Chalice is really good because not only can you negate those monster effects on your opponent's turn, when you're going through your turn and they summon those monsters on your side of the field, you can negate them with a Chalice so you can continue to play. It's almost a no-brainer that one of the best cards against this deck is Dimensional Barrier. This deck exceeds summons. What did you expect? But then there's also Nibiru the Primal Being when this deck does start to full combo, it summons just a little too much. And six Exosister Veda summons two monsters to the side of the field. There's always Lava Golem. A really interesting card is XYZ Universe, seeing that this deck does summon a lot of Exceed monsters on the field. Being able to use their monsters for your own Exceed summon, I don't know, that, that's kind of cool. And that is all that I have for today's meta counter guide. Let me know down below in the comment section, what do you think about this guide? And if there's something that you think could be improved, well, go ahead and let me know that too. Of course, if you wanna see more amazing content, be sure to check out these videos. And then of course, there's Master Duel Cali if you wanna see Master Duel content. I hope you're having an amazing day and I'll catch you on the next video.